They said we could not do it. They said it wasn't possible. But we did it. We created a free radio station to bring the people together and spread an alternative message from the mainstream. They tried to silence us. They tried to hack us. But we carried on. You cannot silence the truth. You cannot enslave freedom. You cannot stop a good idea. You cannot stop Dark City Radio. The crew is now bigger and stronger than ever before. We will not be kept off the airwaves. We will continue. This is not our radio. This is your radio. This is Dark City Radio. This is your Dark City. 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 This is your Dark City, this is your dark city Radio. Bob's with me this evening. Welcome, Bob. Hi, Norris. How you doing? I'm very well, thanks. You? Yeah, good. good. Really good. good. Well, the, the growing conditions have been quite favourable in the Midlands this week. Have they been okay down south? Oh, they've been amazing this week. Everything's just rushing with energy out the ground. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, everything's looking really really vibrantly green here as well. Um, we were expecting a cold patch, which I didn't think was going to come, but it has dropped off in about the last hour, and we've had a bit of rain. But uh, apparently we're on for a, a really hot May. Allegedly. So. May it be hot. Mm -hmm. So I've got plenty of seeds coming up as well. Everything seems to be germinating quite well, including the heritage seeds. So I'm chuffed about that because they can be a bit unpredictable. So, Right, well, I don't know whether you want to talk about that bit. Um, we can do it. Shall I whip through my tips first? Cause they're yeah, all right, all right. I've, what I've what I'll do, Nairis, um, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll let you get on with that for a couple of minutes and then I'll be back, yeah? Okie doke, yeah, because I think the seed thing will be, be a longer conversation. So I'll... Uh, I'll whip through my tips <laughs> first. <laughs> um, Lucky you said that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do have a tend. Oh no, never mind. Anyway, yes, permaculture tip. Well, actually, I've been doing quite well because I managed to pick up today uh, as an example of what you can just come across and find if you observe your surroundings. I found a fantastic. Um, trolley on wheels that's got two great big um, sort of uh, uh, shelves. Why? Like like a shopping trolley. Um, well, I guess Norris is gone, but hopefully there was a pound still in the container. There was a what? Well, you disappeared and I made an assumption that it was a shopping trolley. Oh. And that was oh. still a pound. In the, the <laughs> no, no, it was like a storage <laughs> thing, like a school thing, like a wrought iron frame on wheels, and then it's got two big wire sort of, you know. It's not like uh, a, a cage for children. <laughs> could be, could be. Uh, my my two-year-old wasn't that impressed that I decided to wheel it back from the school back home. <laughs> <laughs> she was going all the way back. I don't want to take the trolley. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be great for the seedlings. It'd be fantastic, yeah. So, you know, I've got that now. I could even make it into a little mini greenhouse because I've got some um, clear plastic. So that was, that was my good permaculture find. I've also made a little cold frame out of um, just scat. Well, we've got an old guinea pig run. Um, old windows are good for that, Norris. If somebody's yeah. putting windows out, they just land for them with the glass. You just... Oh, it's shocking. Shocking, I know. Well, this guinea pig run, we just got, it's literally just things I'd already got, because I'd also got some polystyrene, so I um, glue gunned that into the sides, and then put some, um, oh, what are they called, you know, storage heating bricks at the bottom. So uh, I've got a load of stuff in there. <laughs> 
And I also came across, oh, it's a fantastic channel on YouTube. It's called Bealtaine Cottage. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, a lady in oh. oh, I did post um, a film of hers a few weeks back about right uh, on her raised beds. She's got a lovely garden there. Really beautiful. She's been, um, you know, just talking about using what you've got. She's been making these beds where she didn't have soil that was immensely great. She's literally just been putting mulch in there and shreddings, you know, shredding everything, putting it in there and then sitting things in there in open bottom pots in obviously compost there. Um, and it seemed like a great system. Everything was thriving in there. And then obviously once, you know, you've been doing that for a while, it will actually start to break down. So, you know, it's a really, really low maintenance system, isn't it? sort of a compost heap and a growing bed combined so I was quite well interested. I mean in in theory you can put raw compost straight in the ground anyway mm, mm. Uh, if, yeah, if you're I... putting potatoes in it's quite often good to put kitchen waste right under where you're going to put the seed potatoes because they're like a first crop aren't they they yeah. develop the ground Mm, exactly. Well, I, that is another method, isn't it? Actually, because um, when we've talked, well, when I talked about no dig, um, and perhaps when you are preparing ground in the first instance, you will need to sort of double dig. But that is actually more of a permaculture option. I've done that in the front, where just dig out a massive trench and then put some, you know, paper, cardboard for your carbon, green clippings, that kind of thing, and then cover it over, and then yeah. Yeah, again, it's another low maintenance kind of thing. In fact, I was chatting to a lady as well um, last week because I did uh, that permacul. I ran that permaculture course last week. It was the first one I've ever done. It went really well. Oh, good. It, I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I was really chuffed. I mean, I ran it with Felipe. He wasn't totally solo, and he's very experienced. So you know. Um, but yeah, everyone who came, everyone who said they were going to come came, and so it was pretty cool. And I also managed to provide for that one. Um, oh, we've got we can make up whole salads now here, which I'm really chuffed about. Is what we grow. So I've got some cut and come again stuff, some cut and come again stuff that I overwintered outside uncovered that's got cropping from now, and then we've got some dandelions and um, some land cress. I've got some chard from <clears throat> up at the community allotment because they've got some in the polytunnels. That's doing really well. Um, and then there's a load of flowers because that stuff I use for ground cover, the violas, they're edible flowers. Daisies are edible. And I've got a load of primroses. So, yeah, it made up a nice little salad. It's tough. Yay. <laughs> you put dandelions in. <laughs> um, I put some little um, dandelion leaves, yeah. I didn't put too many because they can be a little bit bitter, can't they? Yeah, and um, they're a diuretic as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I will, um, I'm keeping an eye on the flower heads there. There's not quite enough around yet that are in places where they're not getting. Well, dandelion flowers, they're prolific here at the moment. They're just really, urban. really coming out. Yeah, I'm in an urban environment, so... So are we. So the, well, the, there's a lot of places that are polluted that I can't pick from. Um, and my garden is small, so I reckon, well, basically what I'm trying to Well, I, th I think, you know, as far as dandelions are concerned, their only threat round here is my little granddaughter. And they've got no chance. You know, it's a flower, so it's getting picked. <laughs> So, well, I'm going to make some syrup once I can gather together. You know, you need 50, 50 heads to make, makes about one jar, so. Of dandelion syrup? Yeah, well, that's that's the recipe I'll, I'll go off anyway. I haven't really I've always it. fancied um, uh, uh, dandelions in batter. I thought that yeah. might be quite a nice thing, a, a sort of very light, tempura yeah. sort of batter. Yeah, that's a good idea because they do it with um, elderflowers, don't they? I don't know. 
yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, I've never tried it myself, but I've seen it done with elderflowers. So I suppose it'd be a similar kind of. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, well that's the mission before next week then. Deep fry. Yeah. Tempura batter, dandelion flower heads. Definitely. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up for the challenge. Cool. Right, Right. that's the mission then. (laughs) Excellent. So, um, yeah, what time? Right, okay, so I've got a couple (laughs) more tips. A couple of the ones with slugs. Um... I saw... Um, they good in batter as well. <laughs> oh, no. So, I, I did see a show yeah, with Hugh um, like Fernley Whittingslow where he, um, he did cook some slugs up to eat. And, oh, it was gross, though, because they were just washing them and there was just endless slime. just seemed never-ending. <laughs> uh, we got a few people here with slug phobia, <laughs> so maybe you ought to oh, leave yeah. the slugs... <laughs> no, I wouldn't need to slug. I wouldn't you need wouldn't. to slug. I, we, we talk. Oh, I'm <laughs> we sure talk if you were hungry bit. enough, you would. Well, the thing is, Bob, you know, there's so, I've been looking around today and at what's coming up, and, you know, there's so much stuff you can eat, isn't there? I mean, there's chickweed coming up all over the place. That's edible. And the more you learn about plants, you, you can pretty much eat most plants, <laughs> can't you, really? You know. <laughs> and if you've got got um, a system going there where everything's working in harmony and you've got um, a spiral happening then it, it is constant you know once you've established that, that kind of system so theoretically you would you should never have to eat slugs <laughs> yeah but it's working out the balance for you isn't it well exactly yeah yeah. yeah, maybe maybe in some people's balance that might be a good supplement to your diet. I mean, if, you know, come on, in, in you know, people eat all sorts of weird things right around the planet, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which which do you grubs? I'd rather eat a fried grasshopper than a fried slug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the, uh, deep fried. No, I don't think I could eat one. <laughs> no, I have got a friend. I have got a friend that's really into nutrition. So if I chat to him, I know he's fantastic with facts. He'll go away and find out the nutritional value. He'd probably say that they're you know best done marinated with a bit of garlic and chili, cooked on a barbecue quickly, mm. and then eh, crunchy. People yeah, that, haven't you? <laughs> I think Hugh Fernley, yeah, Hugh Fernley the Whittings, though, fried just was a fry up in butter. And then I think they served them on lettuce in an ironic way, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's kind of hard to trust him because he's an immigrant. He didn't really come down here and, you know, he wasn't born here. Yeah, yeah. He just moved in a few years ago. No, I think, oh, yeah. He, do, he, he brings does, all yeah. these weird home county ideas with him. Yeah. <laughs> I was just pondering on yeah. that. Sorry, my brother works in Waterstones. I was just wondering if they've ever had him in. Like, you get really good insight on what these people who put themselves out there are actually like. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> um, yeah, do. Yeah, maybe he went in on a book signing. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, most sort of people in that famous realm tend to be. Different. Turn out to be generally. Although apparently Michael Caine is really, really nice man. <laughs> yeah, unless you blow the doors off. He's <laughs> not so happy, is he? <laughs> no, generally not. <laughs> so anyway, the solutions with slugs, right, is Vaseline. So sort of thing, what they're doing is they're, so they're again planting in pots, um, sinking the pots in open bottom pots and then putting Vaseline around the edge of the pot. So I think I'm going to try that one because currently at my allotment the slug green ratio is uh, out of whack and uh, I tend to to lose quite a bit if I don't get up there for a couple of days. So I'm going to have a go with that one I think, see how I got on there. Do you know how slugs come into being, Nairis? Um. Well, I mean, I, I did 
he post that uh, footage of the, the leopard slugs mating the other week? <laughs> Did you see that? No, seriously though, um, they kind of lay eggs in, in the soil. Mm. So mm. if you've dug up soil to put in a pot and it's got a few slug eggs in it, it doesn't yeah. matter what you do to the edge of the pot, mm. they're already in there. Yeah, yeah. And the same applies with things like green caterpillars and stuff like that as well. I mean, it's amazing how many times I've sort of gone and looked at plants that I've grown on. I think, God, they've been eaten. How did that happen? And actually, they come out of the soil that you put the plants in. Mm, mm, definitely. It's, I think it's always worth checking, you know, whenever you um, bring any plants in from anywhere else, whether you bought them or been given them, um, it's always good to check the, uh, have a little look at the soil and the roots, because you can often bring things in that way as well, can't you? Well, mostly you don't see the eggs, do you, in the soil? No. I think so it's a question of just, you know, keeping an eye on the soil. And slugs, when they come out of eggs, are really, really tiny. Mm. So, so, um. Oh, I've got a little helper here who's saying garlic spray. So there's a thing. Garlic spray and Vaseline. I don't know if you need to mix them together or whether they're. <laughs> yeah, because they, they don't eat wild garlic, thinking about it, do they? No. I've seen slugs touch, no, they don't touch wild garlic. And I've got a whole bunch of um, tricorn leaves growing out. I think I mentioned this before. And mm. The only thing that eats them is me. The <laughs> only thing. Yeah, see, that's, they're, they're the kind of plants you want to grow. Yeah, it's like the, um, the land crest. And the salad bonnet, I never seem to have a problem with um, anything eating those either. It's when we introduce these really sweet yeah. European and American things that everything stuffs up, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because originally we wouldn't have been competing for the same things. So, and I mean, obviously, if you wanted to go that far, you could actually put sort of a ring of salt on top of the Vaseline if you, if you were yeah. engaged. That is outrageous. <laughs> oh. I hate well, salt. I have, I have used beer traps before, before I have to say. Beer traps. No, I, I will go with beer traps down. because... They drown. Well, true. They do drown. But whether they get pissed first. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope. Isn't it? Yeah, that, that's probably something I'll have to work on. Maybe I should stop using them because I do feel a bit of satisfaction when I go out in the morning and see like <laughs> slugs in the beer trap and go, yes, you <laughs> <can't eat> my <laughs> That's wrong, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in stitches here, Norris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> oh, um, so, yeah, an, another good tip. Well, I, I wanted to talk briefly on this. Again, this could go into a long conversation, but I wonder what you, um, if you use tyres to grow in. What do I use tyres to grow yeah. in? Like um, I did have a big truck tyre once and I tried to grow potatoes in it and mm. I came to the conclusion that they, potatoes actually would grow without that, they didn't need it and I wasn't sure about what the rubber would put into the soil because yeah. it's vulcanised, it's not a natural thing by any means, and it is classed as a um, dangerous material. Yeah, yeah. You can't dispose of them very easily, unless yeah. you build an earth ship, of course, and that's a whole different discussion that I'd like to get into at one point. But 
I think at the end of the day, you'd be better off building a wooden, little wooden frame mm. Mm. than using car tyres. Yeah. Use them for building, you know. Mm. Let's lock up the rubber and, you know, put it into building. Yeah. Yeah, well, I see I've got quite a lot of tyres up at the allotment because, again, it was just um, a thing that was freely available and, you know, very useful in just establishing sort of... Well, you could use them and, you know, ram earth them and use them as a back wall to a coal frame. Well, what I was thinking of doing is, um, because, again, I was watching this Bialtane Cottage, her... her um, films and what she's done is um, got non-edibles in them so um, I think I might go down that route and she was um, so I really love flowering currant I mean you can't eat it obviously but it's a really early pollinator isn't it it's really beautiful um, it feeds the soul as well I think because of the time of flowers you know it's really early. and apparently she was saying she um, roots, you know, cut that one off and it'll root really easily. So there's bramble there, so I think I might establish a sort of a flowering currant and blackberry. Although, I mean, yeah, because the, well, there's an EU landfill direct. I'm quite not sure whether. Um, I know, on um, whole. So, uh, we missed the end of the EU. Ah. Norris, we missed the end of the okay. EU landfill thing. Um, well, there's, a, there's an EU, yeah, there's an EU landfill directive now, and, and they are classed as hazardous waste. Um, and there's a ban in the UK on whole tyres being sent to landfill. So, I, I mean, I think it's a, again, it's another split issue because I think they say when they're very new, um, a lot of stuff will leach out then. But again, if they're very old, you'll tend to get stuff leach out then. Um, and, I mean, I looked up some of the stuff they're made with and there's a lot of known carcinogens in there um, and solvents. And, God, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce these things. I'll, I'll put a link on uh, this for, for YouTube. So, and I think as well, if, if you grow acid foods in there, that tends to sort of activate um, these things to, to gas off. <laughs> is the term I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Reading between the lines, I don't think it's a massive issue. But I think I would tend to give a good wash and maybe um, sort of uh, seal them, perhaps with some non-toxic paint or stain or something along those lines. It's a hard one for me to give up because they're so easily available and so useful. So. It's a, bit, it's a bit tricky. But in a selfish way, I am on top of the hill, so <laughs> everything will run off. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit selfish, but so do my nutrients, so, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> Actually, well, that's I'm, how we got farm runoff in the waterways, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. God, God knows. God knows. So many nitrates. And... Everything out. Oh, I know. Horrific. Awful. Uh, I, I, th I think really the best way to view it is that if you have runoff off your land, it's got to be the best runoff into your neighbours that you can possibly produce. And you, know, you really need to, you know, help each and every one of us. That has to be the first rule of perm permaculture, doesn't it? Well, of course, it's all connected, so you can't, um, you know, you have to treat everything as if it were you know well it's all it's all part of the web so yeah I think they might be building houses at the back of the allotment which is a bit of a worry with uh, what might uh, go into the soil I'm just looking into that one um and another thing that I wanted to ask uh, you about Bob was um have you have you who uh, come across the big deed the, the government initiative have I come across any government initiative? No, it's it's called the Big Dig. No. No, it's it's like a gardening initiative. There's a number of authorities, local authorities, signed up to it. Birmingham signed up to it this year. I don't know. I've been to a couple of meetings and things, but um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, 
Uh, well, um, first of all, put a link up. Mm. That'd be good. Um, secondly, if it's government initiated, it probably has a hidden agenda. Um, and that's why it's think... probably not feeling good with you. Mm, mm. Uh, well, well, I went to a meet. Well, I actually went to a meeting on um, Birmingham City Council held this sort of consultation on uh, how sustainable Birmingham could be and if Birmingham could provide its own food. Uh, and they had a couple of people sort of handpicked to stand up and talk. And one of them, who is running the initiative. Yeah, I'll put links because I can't remember her name, but um, she's from a, a foundation called the uh, the New Optimists Foundation, which was quite funny because she stood up and told us how there was no way Birmingham could be self-sufficient in food. <laughs> well, they can't. Well, they can't, but, you know, her sort of arguments were very... She was looking at um, monoculture systems and, you know, there was no kind of looking to alternative systems to provide food. Um, I mean, obviously, it can't provide its own food in an entirety, but, you know, there's a lot, lot more that can be done that, you know, is outside the box thinking that, again, I think because it's government, they won't um, really consider. Um, and they also, she, she, yeah, so she sort of put this on the website, these kind of, ideas and then I put some on about um, a bit of the, what we were talking about about diversity and why diversity is important and um, kind of permaculture systems and uh, yeah I'll, I'll have to go back and have a look because my comment there didn't um, post my comments that were pending for ages which made me a bit suspicious well, well that tells you straight away doesn't it well, it does, but I'm finding it all quite good fun because I've been I've been chatting to them and I've kind of made my position quite clear on how I feel about you know the way things should you know uh, should be, and um, which is slightly contradictory to what they're saying. Um, but one of these, I'm helping a local church design a garden, and we held basically because the guy that sort of is there at the church responsible for it wanted to affiliate to the big dig which is fair enough it's down to him you know I was happy to you know um for him to do that and we had presence at this event which was held um Birmingham wide and we actually got the highest attendance for it <laughs> I was well chuffed. I don't know if they were considering I've been a bit of a critic about the whole thing so uh, it was a bit of a coup really <laughs> so uh yeah so I'm, well, I'm looking into that one anyway, shall we say. But, um, yeah, so I suppose we can lead on to the, um, the seed legislation stuff now then. That's been um, quite big news this week. That story's doing the rounds. So did you did you say you'd seen this, Bob? No, not at all. Um, I, I suspect it might be under Agenda, agenda 21 and Codex Alimentarius, but... Well, definitely, yeah, I mean... Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's lots of trails to follow there, isn't there? Because um, I did a little bit of looking into it, and most local authorities, when you have a meet at what legislation they're passing... You know, when you when you talk to people and they have this argument about well, Agenda 21 isn't actually legislation, but when you follow the trails, you know there is legislation then being put in place off the back of it, and this is part of example. So this isn't actually passed at the moment; uh, it's a draft document. Uh, um, I think it was drafted in November 2012 by. Um, the EU Directorate Responsible for Health and Consumer Affairs, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> um, so there are changes in regulations on the marketing of plant. Oh, this is the way they the way. Oh God, the way they make me sound of plant reproductive material <laughs> seeds. In other words. They're called seeds. No, but if it's not specifically called seeds, oh. there's a reason why. 
well, large reproductive material is pollen, is it yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and in order to get seeds, you need pollen. So if they, and they can't actually, you know, put a copyright on seeds, but they could on pollen. And it's, I mean, corporations, at the end of the day, they are going to go and bust the world wide open yeah. so that they can make as much money as possible. Yeah. Which, yeah. I think we, we, there's an element of that with GMOs that, you know, obviously once they change the biological structure of those, they can then um, leg, uh, legally patent them. I well, think that's that, how they do it. Yeah. You know, anything yeah. that has a little R in a circle mm. in its name, like, um, oh, Verde, whatever it was that was the broccoli and Verde, whatever it was that was the salad leaves in co-op salads mm. had a little R and it came from a company called Syngenta which is owned by Monsanto yeah. yeah, you know, that's what you got to watch out for is the little registration marks, if it's mm. got one of them don't buy it and it doesn't matter whether it's a seed whether it's a ready grown salad or whether it's a plant ready in a pot. If it's got a little R, mm. forget it. Yeah. Well, I think pre pretty much most commercially available seeds are copyrighted, aren't they? Well, Monsanto's trying to make sure they are. They've been buying up seed companies for the last five, ten years. Yeah. And they want the monopoly. Hmm. Well, well, this is this is um, basically what the, this um, legislation is proposing. That um, they basically want to stop people, gardeners and farmers, obviously, um, exchanging seeds and growing heritage varieties. What they want um, is for them all to be licensed, and so you've got to kind of register to use them. I mean, th this is one example: Garden Organic, who I've mentioned before. Um, which is local to me in Coventry, so I'm a supporter. I remember they're they're amazing. They do such phenomenal work. They've got over 800 varieties of heritage seeds, um, and if they were to have to pay um, for a license or however they're going to structure it on these things, um, that they that well on their website they're estimating at the minute that would cost them 800 thousand pounds a year. Well. From my standpoint, anything that grows naturally mm. is not licensable. And if anyone tells, tries to tell me different, then they got a fight on their hands. Totally agree. Totally agree. Which comes back to uh, seed banks. Everyone should be. Everyone should start a seed bank. You know. Yeah, just collect your favourites, isn't it? Yeah, it's so, so important. Um, so, the, the, I want someone's asking there if there's high street suppliers of non-Monsanto seeds. I think if, if you go into sort of more your more local kind of garden centres, they do sometimes have sort of local producers of seed that is organic seed. The, local the same rule applies. With heritage it's seeds. Lots of little R. Nairis. Yeah. If it's got a little R, it is an own cop by C. Mm, yeah. Right? If it doesn't, no. now you need to check out the seed suppliers then. So if it says Syngenta, yeah. they're owned by Monsanto, so you don't want those seeds. Mm, yeah. yeah you, you've yeah. got to do your own research. You Definitely. have to. Chris is asking about Sutton seeds there. Oh, oh well, I oh, will. Oh, wouldn't buy certain seeds. I mean, I have done in the past, but um, no, they're all produced under licence, aren't they? Um, I have. I'm not sure. With some seeds, you know, I'd have to look into it. it. It wouldn't surprise me if Monsanto have got a hand in there, though, because, I mean, certain seeds are one of the biggest suppliers, I would say, in the UK, aren't they? 
Well, they're by appointment to the Queen, evidently. Yes, yes, they are. That's yeah. right. Which yeah, they have that on the off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I know. I mean, I, I don't it's know who's making it. For, yeah, the Real Seed Company. Um, Carly's saying, yeah. Real Seed Company. Yeah. One. They're, 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 mm, mm. And um, Garden Organic, who I mentioned, they're online. Um, you can order from them online. They've got some um, fabulous stuff. But actual heritage seeds. This this ridiculous legislation covering them currently anyway because you can't sell them. Um. Which is why I'm a member of the Heritage Seed Library, so I pay a membership, and you then get to pick um, six varieties a year. Um, so they do it that way. But I mean, you know, it, 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 just as it stands, it, it's crazy. We shouldn't even have to be doing that. Um, I mean, as, as we were saying earlier, Bob, you know, I, I totally agree with you. The best way to come kind of take a stand about it is just to get on with collecting seed, growing heritage varieties, you know, um, as is our right. It's, I mean, it's not even really a protest, is it? Because it's just our actual natural right to be able to do so. Um, but you can, we have got um, a UK commissioner in the EU that's going to be voting on this draft. Um, I'll put some links up. Her name's Catherine Ashton. Um, oh, she's going to be well trustworthy then, isn't she? Well, she's yeah, she's a baroness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I look, mean, I look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we grow stuff, we harvest it, we collect seeds, we share it with our neighbours. Mm, mm. Like, what else? Why does there need to be legislation? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as Barbs is saying, you know, if you if you're not selling it to make a profit, why does it need legislating? I mean, the dangerous thing is the profit. Therefore, you know, the government needs to legislation legislate against profit. But if you're just trading, giving it away, sharing, there's no reason they for can't legislation. Illegal, can so you guys still there? Oh, and Norris looks busy. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, you come back. Oh, yeah. bless you. Um, I don't know. Did you ca catch that last bit I said there? No. I, I, I think there is an element of, um, you know, wanting to control the food chain and. You know. An element. <laughs> well, there's the prof. There's the profit side of it, and then mm. there's the other side of it of the power side of it of wanting to control the food chain. You know. I think that's there's the two sides of it there. I think it's a mass directive in the UN, isn't it? It's called Agenda 21. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been um, it's been said down the line. It's been said in history anyway, hasn't it? You know, it's an, another one of those things that he who controls the food chain controls the people. You know. So, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it's down to all of us as to whether we let it happen. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm not one for wanting to so let it happen. So that's what I want you to do in starting a seed bank. And if anyone wants seeds, I'll send people seeds. It doesn't cost a lot to send people seeds in the post. I've got some really great, I think I was talking about them the other week, those bags and leeks. They're perennial leeks. Um, I haven't grown them before, but uh, I have put some in my allotment. So you know, if people want seeds, just follow, well, follow me on Facebook. Um, Nerese Kitchener, that's my actual name. <laughs> um, Start a page for it, Nerese. Um, well, yeah, there's the Sandwell and Birmingham Permaculture Group. Um, you can um, find that on Facebook and get in touch with us through there, or there's the website. Just start a specific seed, uh, seed sharing page. Yeah, it? yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I'll help you with that. That'd be yeah. cool. Okay, yeah, good idea. Yeah, let's do that then. Seeds okay. are you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like it. Right, we'll do that. All right, well, we'll, we'll work on that in the next couple of days. Yeah, definitely. That's 
really good idea. Although the best um, time, of course, is the autumn for seeds. It is, it is, although I have found that there's a bit of a, because you know what happens in spring where most gardeners have this totally unrealistic amount of seeds that they're planning to put on and then they tend to be left over with loads that after a bit they realise that they're just, you know, it's not possible. <laughs> so uh, we actually, might we were completely cleaned out of the, the seed bank at that event we did in, or oh, when was that? I can't even remember. Is it April? No. Anyway, a few weeks back. And then I put the call out and um, I realised I'd got loads of seeds. I was getting them all on. And um, other people were just sending them to me and sending them in the post and stuff. So, you know, um, it was really, really cool. But yeah, that is really something that would be really great to get going. I mean, there's a page like that. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm going to write that one down as well. well. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little book now for lists for when I talk to you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. What colour yeah. is it? What, the actual book? Yeah. It's a black book, Bob. <laughs> Nyrese's Black Book of Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we get we're getting quite a few um, comments saying that a sweet a seed swap page is a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So we really need is. yeah we need to get on with this. Let's you know use the technology while we got it. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Because we're yeah. not going to have it all the time. No, and like I say, well, uh, the seed bank um, I've got here is full. So, um, and in fact, I've got loads of, see, that's another thing. People should um, contact me and um, uh, join that Dropbox I've got because I've got a great resource folder in there. With, um, there's lots of stuff about um, how to collect seed um, and of different seeds, you know, tend to need slightly different saving methods. So um, there's all those resources in there. In fact, I put in there this week. Um, I downloaded that from Garden Organic. There were free um, kind of. Uh, well, it's an A to Z of vegetables basically. So each one has got a separate PDF, um, all about the care of the vegetables and stuff. So that's a really good resource. So we've got quite a nice little collection going on in there now of various things. Um, okay, well, we've got to work out a different way of getting this information available to everybody because as far as I know, we're not doing the podcasts anymore. Oh, right. Which means the, the audio file goes out as a um, torrent. Mm. And we're just not on YouTube, so getting all these links across is, I don't actually see how we're going to do it, because the YouTube was a key thing, mm. um, of being able to put all the links underneath the podcast. Now, I can understand why people don't like YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, from my point of view... You know, if if you get twenty people listening to your radio show, but you get a hundred people look at the podcast, you know, I, I think that you know it's a false way of looking at stuff. Anyway, well, I think Prajna is just saying so it, they're going out as MP3s, and then eventually on the web page they'll have. Yeah, but it's, uh, Eventually, it's not good enough. I mean, we're talking about about stuff now, mm. and you're suggesting links. Um, I mean, do you want to read it out? Read the link out just so that it's there. Mm. Um, which link now? <laughs> well, what is it? This is what I'm saying. You know, it's all the things we talk about. Yeah. There's a few you know, at the end of the day, when the podcast comes out, there's a whole great list underneath, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Well, right, well we, how else are we going to do that? Well, I mean, there's Facebook. We can put them on. Um, I have got a website, Sandwell and Birmingham Permaculture Group. 
so um, we can put it on there. So yeah, we'll have we'll have, I'll have to have a think. I mean, there are some places we can we can put it out there. So well, I hope so, but it needs yeah. to be you know the same place everyone goes all mm. the time. Mm. It can't be. Hey, look! If you want to know this, you got to go over there. If you want to know that, you go there. If you, you know, it's not going to work, is it? Well, I mean, there, there is a forum on our website. I haven't really. I'll put it on there, but I haven't really kind of had the time or energy to sort of get it going Weird. as a big, you know, used forum. So there is the option of kind of utilising that for stuff. So we could do that. Oh, we've only got mm. nine left i haven't even thought i was supposed to be talking about more about permaculture design tonight no that's next week yeah it'll have to be i'm going to get told off by my mom again because <laughs> i wanted to chat to people about kind of what they're you know what they're growing in their gardens and stuff so. oh bless you nairis's mum um <laughs> unfortunately we only have an hour yeah and each time because it's organic and I hope you realise that we just flow. Yeah. And um, hopefully, Nairis will be coming on with me tomorrow um, yes. on the resistance news. And uh, Nairis will be doing the same to me as I do to her. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure. <laughs> yes, cool. Well, what was your topic for tomorrow, Bob? Did Eco side. Yes. Well, wow, that's certainly a big, a big subject. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a difficult one. Mm. It is going to be a difficult one, but I'd, I'd just love to have the chat with you, really. Yeah, excellent. Um, I was going to go to a live event um, and do an outside broadcast, but mm. I think everything that needed to be said um, sorry I'm advertising my show now yeah, that's quite Nerese right. you carry on with yours uh, these are the edges Bob remember what we were talking about diversity and everything they're the edges where things meet <laughs> they're the proper the bits coastal region yeah exactly they're the most diverse bits that's the whole point <laughs> So, well, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I don't want to start touching on, um, perhaps we'll have a chat about design next week then. I was going to um, talk a little bit about acronyms, you know, um, which is uh, a way of uh, working out kind of your, your elements of permaculture design. So, yeah, I, I may have a guess. That would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Acronyms for chemicals. Yeah, yeah. You could do. You totally no, no, me I think, I think that's a good idea because, I mean, you know, putting aside synthetic chemicals, natural chemicals, it's good to know what's useful. Yes. You know, I mean, how many people really know? Not many. You know, about putting nitrogen in the soil, potassium phosphates how many people know you know a natural way to do that yeah oh actually that's a little i forgot to mention that one in my tips earlier um i was chatting to a lady who she was saying um she uses grass as um a fertilizer you know she makes a feed from it same as you would do with comfrey or nettles i've never heard of that before but she was saying that works really well I don't know what, what kind of grass type grass. Um yeah. Yeah. When she when she mows the grass, she just, you know, same as you would in a tub covered with water. So that's an intro. I'll I'll have a look into the nutrient value on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I that's would kind of... have thought that would have been really acidic. Yeah, I know, bizarre. I'll 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 have a mooch into that one for next week as well, because I have heard people say before you know that they've used it as a mulch when sheep mulching because um, it was what was available to them so um, hmm. yeah that's, a, that's another one to pursue maybe she lives in a really chalky area so it'd work yeah could be yeah where was she she was down south somewhere well, I, know, I know when you're making your own compost you should not put in layers and layers of grass so yeah 
Well, again, it's like everything else, isn't it? It has to be a balance. I did you when I dug that trench out the front. I was talking about earlier. I did put some grass in there, but it was, um, you know, I made sure there was a decent balance there. So yeah, lots of mm. kitchen stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, um, we we may possibly have um, a guest on next week. Um, of oh, I'm not a guest. <laughs> Stephen, he does. Um, I don't know if you've seen him on Facebook. Well, they've got an amazing website as well called Permanent Culture Now. Um, they post loads of great stuff on Facebook. Their website is an absolutely amazing resource. So I'll have to put the link up to um, them. And yeah, they those guys do loads of great work in the community with schools and various groups and stuff. So it'll be uh, quite an inspirational guy to uh, to get on. So, um, yes, as it stands at the minute, because I'm finding this guest thing a bit precarious. <laughs> they're booked in, then they're not booked in, and then you've got two booked in, and then they've all gone, and, you know, it's a bit of one of those where guests are concerned. So, but I figure, what's, like you say, Bob, it's organic, isn't it? So, what's meant to happen, happens. So. Well, that's exactly right. That's yeah. the way I look at it. You you can you know you just deal with what you can deal with. Otherwise, you're getting into what the stress situation of the corporate world, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, and it affects your ability to communicate, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. and then what's meant to come out doesn't come out. Something else comes out, and then it, you know. Well, yeah. that happens with what we do anyway, doesn't it? What's meant to come out comes out. Yeah. Well, yes, but yeah, you 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 have to be um. Well, you have to be conscious in the first place to let go, and then not conscious enough to let go. If you know what I mean, or you can tell it's coming to the end. <laughs> I'm getting all philosophical now. I have to go and sit on. The you bed. are, and I've got three spinning stars that are telling me you're going to wind down now. <laughs> yes, I am. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. I remember I, I opened the circle, so I'm going to close, close the permaculture circle again for this evening. I'm actually doing it now, live as we speak. I'm waving my wand around. <laughs> I'm going to come so, and look at your wand because I'm a, <laughs> I know a lot about wands. Do you? Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's not gaudy or anything, Bob, but um, I like to think it's... <laughs> uh, attractively honed. I did whittle it myself, so. <laughs> well, there's a real life mission for us just on that. <laughs> yes, I'll show you my wand one day, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not right going then. to say the same. It might be misconstrued. <laughs> Oh, that's time. I don't know if we've gone now, but if we haven't gone, good evening, things, everyone. <laughs> things on that city radio. Lots of things.